Welcome back here to the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet Daily. We're brought to you by City Cafe. Check out their lunch specials every day on City Cafe at City Cafe. O'Neill and George O'Neill here in Baton Rouge in business for over 100 years and online at citycafebr.net. Louisiana, the Raging Cajuns clinched their fourth straight Sunbelt Western Division title last week with their win over Georgia State, and they had to uh, scratch and claw to get out of there with a 21-17 victory. Coach Napier and the crew converted a couple of fourth downs late in that game to get the win. It was exciting to watch that game on ESPN, but uh, very much um, also looking forward to our conversation as we've talked to Coach Napier over the past couple of weeks, and he's back with us here on the Jordy Collada Show. Coach, congratulations on the win and the, uh, the Western Division title. Thank you for your time this morning. Thanks for having me on, Jordy. I appreciate you covering the Raging Cajuns, man. Always, man. Uh, you have a uh, you got a, a bout versus Troy coming up this week that we'll talk about. But uh, take me back to Georgia State. That was one of those games, man, where it was it, it kind of felt like a heavyweight fight. A couple of haymakers being thrown. You kind of were able to, to 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 take them, and you had to convert some fourth downs. And then at the end of the game, your uh, your team pulled it out. That was a uh, an excellent performance to get that that Western Division title. Yeah, a lot of respect uh, for Sean Elliott and uh, his team at Georgia State, man. Really, having been in this league for a couple years now, really respect how his team plays. You know, he's certainly really good at the line of scrimmage on the edges in the front seven. Uh, and they showed up, man. They were ready to play. Certainly uh, very motivated. You know, they're right in the middle of the Eastern Division race. Uh, they had won three in a row. We knew it was going to be a challenge. Uh, and it was. So, um, you know, I got to compliment uh, our staff and our players. I felt like we kept our poise, you know, really stayed the course, um, made some nice adjustments at the half. And uh, certainly, you know, I don't know what it is about the Cajuns, but we played in a lot of these tight games, one score games, and these kids find a way to win. Coach, you went for it on fourth down three times, and I wanted to talk to you specifically about game management and situational football. It seems like they're every weekend in college football, it comes down to a situational call, either making right or wrong decision, critical call, into the half, into the game, managing the clock, etc. cetera. Uh, we saw you in that moment versus Georgia State decide to pull the trigger on three fourth downs in which you executed, and it was probably uh, you know three mile markers that you can look at in, in winning that game. Um, how do you handle those? How do you prepare for those moments? Well, it's part of our year-round plan. You know, I think we spend quite a bit of time in the off-season uh, working with different companies from an analytics standpoint uh, relative to how we put our team together. Um, you know, we, we work hard um, to create a team that plays complementary football. You know, we want to be a good offensive team. We want to be a good defensive team. And uh, certainly what we call them here is game changers. We want to be have a good special teams uh, group. So, you know, I think in college football these days, um, each week when you show up to the park, might not have your best day in one of those areas, right? And it's important that you're a true team. So it's how we put our team together. We work hard on situational football. It's part of our formula here. Um, we work hard to create uh, football IQ with the players. Uh, we work situations uh, in our installations for spring practice, for training camp. We have a very specific routine in season in terms of how we install. Uh, and I think our players trust the plan. They know the plan. Uh, we do quite a bit of work uh, on Fridays. We have a situational script that we go through. Uh, we have a presentation every Monday. Uh, that someone's in charge of that pulls scenarios from around the country. Uh, so I, I do think that um, it continues to evolve, right? I think we have access to more information uh, than maybe we did five or 10 years ago. So our approach here has been to use that information to try to help our team win. and certainly has helped us. Yeah, I was going to ask you about analytics as well. It seems like that's getting used more and more in college football and in the way in the NFL the last five years. What's your thoughts on it? How do you utilize it in, in, in game planning? Well, we don't, I don't necessarily think that we um, – I think it's just part of our big picture plan, right, in uh -huh. terms of our philosophy, how we manage the game relative to down and distance, to field zone, certainly the clock, the score, timeouts. I mean, it's all inclusive. Uh, and I think that these people, um, reality is they, 
it's what they do for a living, right? So uh, we have a working relationship with a number of these different companies. Uh, and certainly they provide us with information. We use it as we prepare each week. Um, each one of these matchups is a little bit different in terms of strengths and weaknesses. Uh, and I also think that it helps you call the game. You know, I know for me, um, you know, in all three areas of our team, the more information we have, the better. So the key is how you use the information, right? Um, and I think that we've done a nice job of that here within the building, mm -hmm. um, you know, offense, defense, and special teams of applying, um, you know, what we think helps position the team to have success. That's what it's about. It's about winning. Why wouldn't you use it, right? Yeah. It's uh, more information. Uh, maybe that hasn't been available in the past. Fourth straight division win, uh, uh, fourth straight division title for Coach Billy Napier and the Raging Cajuns clinched last week versus Georgia State in the Sun Belt. They've got Troy coming up here, and then they'll face Hugh Freeze at Liberty uh, at Liberty on November 20th. Uh, Coach, one thing in watching that game that was really impressive with your team is that they never lost the faith. You could tell that they were bought in for four quarters and 60 minutes. Everybody talks about culture in college football. How do you define it? How do you implement it? Well, you know, I think first place you start is uh, you've got to establish uh, trust uh, and you've got to establish really strong communication, right? I think any issue that I've ever had in life is because we were lacking in, in those areas, right? That could apply to our team. Uh, that could apply to coach to player, player to coach, coach to coach. Uh, certainly, even just in life in general, I think when there's a lack of trust or there's a lack of communication, you have issues. So we start there, uh, work hard on the relationship part. Um, we we have a team, right? I think it's one thing to collect talent. It's another thing to build a team, right? And I think you start in the off offseason. Uh, it's a, it's a year-round approach. We teach values here uh, to our team. Um you know, we work hard on the messaging, right? I think uh, it's part of what we do in strength and conditioning. It's part of how we practice. It's, it's. Um, I think it's hard to uh, put into words, but I, I do think that you have to know what you believe. Uh, you got to know who you are, right? You got to have your foundation, your values, your convictions. Uh, and ultimately, I think that helps you create an identity as a team, right? That distinguishes you. Uh, from other teams, uh, from other players. Uh, and certainly, uh, we've been fortunate here to hire really good people. Uh, we've been fortunate here to recruit and evaluate good people. Uh, and I think the people make up the team, and ultimately, football is a game that's about people. Uh, your running back, freshman Montrell Johnson, is an absolute stud. He has been named to the Sean Alexander Freshman of the Year Watch Award list. Um, what you see in him in recruiting? And how has he continued to affect your team as, as a first-year player? Well, Montreal's a unique player. You know, I felt he was I, – I think uh, he's a great example of our evaluation process. You know, we felt that he was an underrated player coming out. You know, we were fortunate to get him there last year at the end. Uh, but Montreal's a 220-pound back. Uh, he's got a big lower half. He's got great contact balance catches the ball well. Uh, he's smart. He picks it up quickly. Uh, I've been impressed with his practice habits, uh, his toughness, and then certainly he showed uh, even a little bit more finishing speed than maybe people thought he had, right? So uh, we needed help at running back. We signed four freshmen last year. Uh, he emerged out of that group as a guy that we knew was going to be able to help our team, and he's done just that. He's, he's made a difference for sure. Speaking of guys like Montrell, player development. You, you've seen the, the, the greatest talent in college football during your days at Alabama. You've got great talent in, in that locker room at UL. How do you take a top recruit and help him become great? Is that a process that's different or the same from a, a kid that's under-recruited uh, and developing him into a pro? What, what's it like developing a five-star uh, and then comparing to, to developing a, a two- or three-star? You know, I think there's um, – there's, there are some differences, I would say, but I, I do think that it starts with the right mindset, right? It starts with the uh, competition in the building, 
You know, I think the, you know, again, I go back to um, it's an it's a year round approach, right? We have eight phases to our off season. Uh, we have very specific goals and objectives for the players and the staff in each one of those phases. Uh, I do think that here at UL, uh, we've had to uh, develop players uh, more than maybe some of the places that I've had in the past, yeah. uh, been in the past. Um, I think that we've had to teach football here. I think we've had to take size, speed, height, and length um, and teach fundamentals. Uh, but I do think it's a part of your year-round plan. I think that uh, you start with the the person. You know, I really believe that. I think it's mm-hmm. about uh, getting that person in the right place, having the right mindset, creating a team, uh, identifying players that can do jobs for your team, and then teaching them football, teaching them a set of fundamentals. Uh, and it's about repetition. It's about feedback. Uh, you got to surround the players with uh, competent coaches. Uh, we've been fortunate to do that here. Um, so, you know, I think you start with evaluation, you recruit them, and once they're on your campus, it's no longer about ability. It's about the intangibles, and it's about all the things that they can improve. And they can improve their football IQ, they can improve uh, their fundamentals, and they can prove uh, what type of teammate they are. So, you know, that's the approach we take here. And I, there's no question in my mind uh, that we learned that in some of the best places in college football. You were on ESPN Plus this Saturday in Troy, Alabama, taking on Troy. What are the uh, what are the challenges they present? You know, Troy's got a heck of a football team, man. I think they're um, very underrated. They've played everybody close, although they've lost a few. They've won, I think, four out of the last five or three out of the last four Um you know, I see a defense as one. It's the top defense in our league, scoring and total. Um, they they do a nice job. A lot of front presentation, a lot of variables and pressure and coverage. Uh, they're plus eight as a team, partly because they've created twenty takeaways on defense. And you know, Chip Lindsey's the offensive uh, coordinator and head coach, play caller. He always does a nice job of featuring his players, being creative, creating opportunities for them they always score they always produce yards and they've got some good specialists so i think it's a combination of all three Uh, we've got to go play at their place there's a lot of tradition and history uh, at this place Uh, but you know our team's got a lot to play for as well you know we're trying to secure home field advantage for the sunbelt conference championship game here in a couple weeks Uh, so we will be very motivated uh, away from Cajun Field for the next two weeks as they'll be in Troy, taking on Troy this Saturday, then traveling up to Lynchburg, Virginia, to take on Hugh Freeze and Liberty on November 20th before closing out the season on Senior Day back at Cajun Field on the 27th versus ULM. Always appreciate your time and insight, Coach. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you, Jordy. Have a good day, man. Yes, I'll sir. see you around. Yes, sir. Thank you, Coach Nate. There is uh, Billy Napier from uh, the Raging Cajun See program. Around. What does that mean? Uh, what does yes, that mean? Yes. Sprinkling it out there, the uh, <laughs> the little nuggets for you there from Coach Napier. Always good to get some of the insight there. Very impressive uh, in his conversation. We appreciate your interaction. Make sure you like, share, comment on our post here as daily. We are brought to you and driven by Go Chevrolet. Seeking uh, Nick Richard inside of the, uh, of the bunker here on YouTube. Shout out to Nikki and the crew. Of course, down in Laplace, Louisiana, go Chevrolet, brand new cars that you can go down there, test drive, and, and jump into a new model. If you're looking for uh, a, a used car selection, uh, they've got fantastic to choose from, a, a tremendous selection at Go Express Auto Sales. Check them out online, everything online at GEAUXChevrolet.com.